Welcome. Today we're talking about one of the coolest cars to ever come from Japan, the Z car. The Z car is so cool that a police department in Tokyo decided to use them as their police cruisers. The Z is something that most sports cars can't do. It puts great performance at an affordable price. In fact, I'm willing to bet that you've seen one driving around. That's how affordable they are. The Z has been around for a long time, which is unsurprising because Mr. K, the guy who introduced the Z to the US, passed away at the young age of 105, holding on for a long time. There have been six generations of this car since its inception in 1970. Let's go through them from A to Z. Similar to present times, the Datsun 240Z came about in a world in shambles. Apollo 13 was blowing up, the US was invading Cambodia, the Beatles were breaking up, and worst of all, Ford introduced the Pinto to the world. 240Z was a clear competitor for Toyota's 2000 GT, designed by Yamaha. A design originally offered to Nissan, but they would turn it down. A good move considering the success of the Z. The original price of the Z was $3,626, or about $24,000 in today's money. In addition to the success with consumers, the Z proved very successful on the track. In 1971, the previously unproven Z won both first and second in the East African Rally. The 240Z produced about 150 horsepower from its 2.4 liter engine, which is where the 240 and 240Z comes from. The Z, well that just comes out of the fact that they ran out of letters A through Y. The Datsun 280ZX is where the Z lost its way. It was no longer the sports car of the past. It turned into more of a plus size GT. It brought with it things that would appeal to the average disco goer of the 70s, such as a T-top, velour upholstery, a digital dashboard, and suspension that can only be described as Temply. However, it still managed to be successful on the racetrack. In 1982, actor Paul Newman won the eighth round of the Trans Am competition at Brainerd in the 280ZX. For the third generation Z, the 300ZX, Nissan dropped the Datsun nameplate like an A-bomb on Hiroshima. It would be known as the Nissan Z from here on out. This Z brought with it some cool stuff from the 80s, like one of my absolute favorite features, pop-up headlights. This Z still wasn't as good as the original 240, but it was better than the 280ZX with a better ride and handling. Like the previous Zs, this one was successful on the racetrack, winning the 1985 Japanese Rally Championship. For the 90s, the fourth generation Z came out, and again, it returned to the greatness of the original 240. In fact, this generation of Z was so great that Lamborghini got jealous and stole the headlights off the 300ZX for their Diablo. At its time, it was hands down one of the best handling cars on the market, a trademark of the Z. Perhaps the 300ZX was the most successful racing Z of all time. It won the 1994 24 Hours of Daytona, 12 Hours of Sebring, as well as placing fifth overall at Le Mans. Likely because Nissan didn't have anything great enough to follow the 300ZX, they took a brief break, probably to catch some Zs, and returned in 2003 with a 350Z. The 300ZX was great. But the 350Z brought the Z back to its roots. And it was the first Z to ever receive the Nissan Motorsports International Edition, or Nismo. Nismo is Nissan's performance car division, similar to Mercedes AMG or BMW's M. The Nissan 370Z took over in 2009, and unsurprisingly, it had a Nismo edition. More surprisingly, it was the fastest Z car ever made. This one's been hanging on the longest of all the Z cars, and is expected to be replaced by the Z Proto in 2022 or 2023. This is one of the best handling cars I've ever driven. Thanks to the responsive steering wheel, great suspension, as well as these crossbars up here in the front, as well as in the back. Couple the handling with a very responsive transmission and engine, and it makes for a great driving experience. Also, the car automatically rev matches for you, syncing your RPMs to make downshifts even smoother. There's a sporty feel inside. For example, you insert the key fob on the left because race car. You have paddle shifters here, racing pedals, as well as sporty gauges up top. One of the only problems with the Z is that there isn't much cargo space, but of course, that's not the purpose of the Z. This year, Nissan announced a new generation of Z coming out. The Z35, or the 400Z, or the Proto Z, whatever you want to call it. The 400Z is supposed to get the twin turbo 3 liter V6 out of the Infiniti Q50, with a six speed manual or a seven speed auto. This leads to a problem. As I said earlier, the numbers in the Z stand for the displacement. The 350Z is a 3.5 liter, the 370Z is a 3.7 liter. So the 400Z is not really gonna to make too much sense when we have a three liter twin turbo. Nissan claims it's taken elements from the 240Z as well as the 300ZX, Arguably, the two best Z cars ever made. Nissan seems to be focusing on beating Toyota's Supra, which is kind of worrying, because it's strained from the purpose of the original Z, which was to be an affordable sports car. Now, the new price tag is looking like it's going to be upwards of at least $40,000. The Z car is truly an impressive blend of engineering. The president of Nissan said that the 240Z had European styling, American muscle, Japanese quality, and global desirability. The Z scene has a huge following, which is unsurprising, considering there have been over 1.3 million Z sold. Personally, I always thought Nissan was the most boring of all car manufacturers. However, the Z does not fit in there at all. It truly is a great sports car and deserves all the hype that it gets. If Nissan does go belly up from its financial woes, the world truly will miss the Z car. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. Thank you.